Hi everyone, uh, welcome to this short tutorial on creating bubble map in QGIS. So, this is the data set that we are going to use for creating uh, size bubbles and color bubbles. So, you can see we have nine different locations and the corresponding point coordinates and the amount of rainfall received by these locations. Uh, monthly rainfall in fact. So what we are going to do is that we'll be creating size bubbles and color bubbles. So size bubbles are nothing but uh, you might have already guessed it. Uh, so in this map, when the size gets bigger, uh, the corresponding amount of rainfall received by these uh, locations will also get higher. And in, and but whereas in the case of color bubbles, uh, we are using different shades of a particular color. For example, in this case, we are using different shades of uh, red to indicate the corresponding amount of rainfall re received by different locations. So in this case, you can see the range of rainfall received by uh, the region and the corresponding color. So in the case of darker red, uh, locations like this one and this one have received the highest amount of rainfall compared to this uh, lighter shades of red as you can see here so i have opened my qgis and i'm going to start a new empty project by double clicking on it and first of all you need a base map to work with right you need to know where your study area is actually so i'm going to i'm going to web cube map services and i'm going to choose oism standard so this is going to be our base map and if you don't know how to access this base map uh, just go to plugins Go to manage and install plugins and here you have to search quick map services this one and simply you just install it i have already installed it that's why i'm not going to repeat it and close it and if you go to web quick map services and oism you'll be able to find the base map that's it and i'm going to zoom into my study area this is my study area which is a tiger reserve and uh, Rainfall measurements were taken at different locations within this reserve and I'm having this data in my drive So I need to import the rainfall data onto this base map and for that I'm going to choose layer Go to add layer and there is an option called add delimited text layer. I'm choosing it and I'm going to browse my file from here and this is the file rainfall data. So all the data that we'll be using in this tutorial, I have uploaded into my Google Drive. So you can simply down, get it and do everything by yourself. Uh, and the link to download these files have provided in the description below. So just have a look at it. So I'm going to select this rainfall data and open it. So as I selected it, what happened is that you can see the location here s1 s2 s3 s4 and all the longitude the latitude and the rainfall so the x field is going to be longitude and the y field is going to be our latitude and we are going to add point coordinates simply click add and close it done we have successfully added our points and now need we need to label them like we don't know which one is site one which one is site two the site three and all right so for labeling these points you can right click and go to properties and there is this particular option called control feature labeling and you have to click on this drop down menu and select single labels and from here this value is going to be the location so it is in the location column in the csv in the excel sheet and which was in csv format actually so your data should also be in csv format if you want to add them into you know import them into QGIS so I'm going to choose lo the location column here which contains the site names and click apply and ok see we have successfully added our sampling the labels or the names of our sampling sites s1 s2 s3 and all and if you go to the same option again uh, there is a lot of options to change the font size font color and there is placement which will control the distance between the points and the the distance between the you know points and the label so you can increase the distance you can decrease the distance and all so just check it out if you have time so the next thing what i'm going to do is that i need to highlight my study area and for that i am going to 
reduce the opacity of the OSM standard map and for that you can right click go to properties and there's an option called transparency and here you can reduce the global opacity so I'm going to keep it uh, 38 maybe click apply and OK now the background has become you know um, the opacity we, redu we reduce the opacity of the background layer and I need to add a shape file for this tiger reserve a vector polygon representing or uh, representing the shape of this wildlife sanctuary or tiger reserve so if you don't know how to create a shape file for your study area or your region of interest uh, i have elaborately explained how to do that in one of my previous videos you go and check it out i have given the link in the description and come back so because using that method i have already prepared the prepared a, a shape file or a vector polygon for this particular tiger reserve which i'm going to add or import into qgis now I'm going to, uh, this is the shape file in GeoJSON format. I'm going to drag and drop it. See, it has become visible here and I need to change the color by right clicking on the protected area, polygon layer, go into properties. And there is this control feature symbology option. And if you go to simple fill, you can find uh, several options to change the color here. So there are several colors. So I'm going to choose this green. And let's make it uh, more transparent. Click apply. Okay, done. Looks better, right? So that's it. We have added the shape file. We have also added the points. We have also labeled them. And the next step is to prepare bubble map. So for creating bubble map, you have to right click on this rainfall data, the point layer and go to properties and you can see single symbol here right so instead of that we are going to choose graduated option and the value is going to be rainfall because based on the rainfall we are going to create the bubbles and the method first of all we will create color bubbles then we will create size bubbles so for creating color bubbles you have to choose color from this method option and simply click classify so which will create uh, which will assign different colored bubbles for different ranges of rainfall you can see here the lowest star uh, the lowest amount of rainfall the range of rainfall is here 278 to 288 and the symbol is going to be this one which is white and as the rainfall the range of rainfall gets higher the color also gets darker and you have to simply click apply yeah it's done but the our symbols are uh, very small right so you can increase the size of the symbol of these points by clicking on this symbol and increase the size okay 4.4 will be enough click apply again and okay so that's it it looks uh, better right now right and uh, you can simply say the amount of rainfall received at s5 and s4 are relatively or much less than that of others and if you want to create a size bubble it's simple just right click on the same layer rainfall data go to properties and here it's already there we have already done everything and instead of method in color instead of color you have to choose size and click classify and you can change the color of the uh, bubbles by clicking here and go to symbol marker i'm going to choose red color and i'm going to make it you know transparent okay apply done so now we have successfully created the size bubbles as well and they don't look red i'm going to change it again okay Up, okay apply okay see done so now what happened is that uh, you can see the larger bubbles indicate higher range of rainfall and the smaller bubbles indicate the smaller uh, the lower amount of rainfall received by the regions the thing to notice is that uh, i'm going to right click and go into properties so if you're changing your method size to color or 
make sure that you are pressing classify then only the value will be values will get classified anyways that's it okay we are successfully created our bubble map and if you want to create a steady area map using this you can simply go to this option new print layout click ok um, zooming in and there is an option to add map click there and click and draw a map on the canvas see if i zoom in you can see this this steady area map looks blurred now but if you save it when you finally save it it looks uh, you know better i don't know why it appears uh, so blurred anyways let it be now what we have to do is that we need to add the legend right so you have you can click here this option add legend option and draw the legend box here so here you can see uh, the rainfall data here and there are two unwanted layers also in this legend box you can remove it by going to the legend items under legend and click on this unselect this auto update option and if you scroll down you can select this unwanted layer and remove it by clicking here select the OSM standard layer and removing it and if you double click on double click on the rainfall data which is the column name you can remove this you can uh, delete this data avoid data and keep it right at the center mm, that's it okay this is it we have successfully created our size bubble map indicating the variation rainfall across nine different locations within this uh, protected area and if you want to save it you can go to this option export as image click there just close it and this is going to be my bubble map and which will be saved in png format you can save it in pdf or svg format as well you can see the icons here right and the resolution i'm going to keep 350 so that the output will be of higher resolution and the uh, saved map will be opened after exporting let's wait okay this is it this is our first uh, bubble map we just created and if you want to add coordinates uh the north arrow grid cells and all onto this steady area map just check out my previous video i have ex I elaborately explained everything in it the same video i was talking about earlier so do check it out and come back so that's it thanks for watching and i'll be back with a new tutorial soon